A few weeks ago, we revealed on this channel that fossilized footprints in the Tularosa Basin in southern New Mexico near White Sands, well, they reveal that human habitation was occurring as early as 23,000 years ago here in North America. And this is groundbreaking. It goes against the narrative, the paradigm, that the archaeologists have been trying to hold on to for decades. Well, and we've broken through. It's clear that there is a pre-Clovis culture. The Smithsonian has been withholding evidence for decades as well. A good friend of mine that runs the Smithsonian, Dennis Stanford, has revealed this to me. In fact, the Smithsonian has been holding on to tens of thousands of Salutrian artifacts for decades and haven't published a thing on them because they go against the narrative. And this is the problem with science. It is controlled by those with the money, the funders. And that is not good science. But the paradigm continues to be crushed as Ice Age footprints have been excavated in Utah this month. Yes, archaeologists have found another prehistoric footprint site in Utah's West Desert. And that location, take a look, is at the Hill Air Force Base in Utah. Now, archaeologists working for the Air Force this month have discovered 88 human footprints preserved in the Alkali Flats on the Utah Test and Training Range, which we will refer to as UTTR as we continue. And these archaeologists believe that these prints date to more than 12,000 years ago. Now, additional confirmation research is being done, but this would be the only the second such discovery of footprints in the United States unless others have been covered up. Now, White Sands National Park in New Mexico, as we just told you about, is the other place where Pleistocene age human footprints have been identified, and those have been dated to 23,000 years ago. Now, according to Anya Kitterman, the Hill Air Force Base's cultural resource manager, he claims that they found so much more than they bargained for. Kitterman, as you can see here pointing into one of the footprints, is overseeing archaeological work on the UTTR this month that includes a 5,000-acre archaeological survey and a pilot study on the use of non-invasive archaeological techniques, including the use of magnetometers as well as ground-penetrating radar, or GPR. Now, the work is being done by the Far West Anthropological Research Group, subcontracted through Argonne National Labs under the direction of Principal Investigator Dr. Darren Duke. While the busy range undergoes annual maintenance and upkeep, they, they decided to bring some archaeologists in here, and wow, what a good decision. Now, the footprints were found... While Duke and Thomas Urban, a research scientist with Cornell, were collaborating in early July on the pilot study. Urban is part of the White Sands research team and has developed techniques for recording ancient prints with GPR. And David Bustos of White Sands National Park visited the site to advise on the documentation and preservation of the tracks. So they got the top in the field, the ones that found the tracks in white sands to come up here, and that means this is good science. Now, the prehistoric footprints discovery at what is now being called the trackway site complements 2016 discoveries made nearby at the Wishbone site. Now, the two sites are located within a half mile of each other in what would have been a large wetland now referred to by scientists as the old riverbed delta. An open-air hearth or fire pit that dates to 12,300 years ago was found at Wishbone. Now this means that the populations walking around in the Four Corners region were here as early as 23,000 years ago and still populating the region right at the Younger Dryest event, after it, 12,300 years ago. And this would be about 600 years after the major catastrophe. So these people made it in Utah. 
And can, can you imagine if we could go back in time and talk to this person walking across the ground or apparently running based on what I see here? It's absolutely mind-blowing. Now let's get back to the archaeological evidence. They found an open-air hearth or a fire pit and they carbon dated it to 12,300 years ago. And this was found by Wishbone. Along it, near this hearth were burnt bird bones, charcoal, and numerous artifacts such as hasket projectile points and other stone tools. Evidence was also found for the earliest known human use of tobacco in the world. So these people, after they just survived a cosmic catastrophe, were smoking tobacco. Kudos to them. Now, based on exca excavations of several prints at the site, they found evidence of adults with children from about 5 to 12 years of age that were leaving bare footprints, according to the team. People appear to have been walking in shallow water, the sand rapidly infilling their prints behind them, much as you might expect on a beach, more like the bay. You know that mucky mud? These prints are deep. But under the sand was a layer of mud that kept the print intact after the infilling, just as I said. Now, with the 100-plus degrees on the dry, stark landscape of the UTTR in July today, it's difficult to visualize the above scenario with a marsh and all it being different. But... According to the team, there have been no wetland conditions to produce the trackways or footprint trails in this remote area of the Great Salt Lake Desert since before 10,000 years ago. So this is more evidence to corroborate the carbon dating of 12,300 years. Now, the long-term work on geochronology of this area suggests that the prints are likely more than 12,000 years old based on multiple data points. And Duke said he likes to refer to the old riverbed delta as a lost oasis because of how different this huge, bountiful marshland would have been from the barren playa it is today. But more importantly, and what they left out from this discovery, the paper, and the scientific analysis, is the fact that it is so close to the Younger Dryas catastrophe that killed almost all of the Clovis people that this proves that humans made it past that cosmic catastrophe. In fact, they were walking around on this playa with their children just a few hundred years later. And that, that is mind-blowing. And the fact that we are all uncovering and pushing back the dates of humans populating North America thousands of years, just in the last few years, is even more mind-bending. Now, I knew as early as two decades ago, talking to Dennis Stanford, that the Smithsonian knew that people were around 16,000, 17,000 years ago, but they couldn't publish papers because it went against the mainstream narrative. And the Smithsonian, well, they control the narrative. And this is the problem with science. There's a few upper-level people that control the narrative. The most egregious one that's been bastardized for decades is the Egypt story and the ministry of truth in Egypt. If we only knew how much evidence that they've hidden in that region, the entire history of humanity would change. And that's the sad part of where we are with science. Now, the Air Force Base has been very supportive and facilitating of the trackway find, according to the scientists. But they have a mission to complete. And for years, Hill Air Force Base has done this with preserving and protecting the archaeological record. And we respect them for that. I mean, wholeheartedly. Can you imagine the military-industrial complex embracing this study and protecting this region? This is a new paradigm shift. And, well, kudos to them. 
The team has also collected the infill of the prints to see if they can find organic materials to radiocarbon that as well, including like spores or pollen or some other detritus that might be in there. The team also wants to further detail the prints themselves as to who compromised the group, how they were using the area, and they've also been talking to Native American tribes about their perspectives on the prints, but that's ridiculous. The Native American tribes in this region have no relation to these people 12,300 years later. In fact, I don't think they're related at all, in my opinion, based on the facts. But it's something they can hold on to. Now, the Hill Air Force Base regularly consults with 21 American tribes about the 822 archaeological sites on the base. And they range for a period of 12,300 years now. So clearly, some of them belong to local tribes and others do not. Now, the team's perspective... Presence and understanding is invaluable because our shared human history and the stories are what truly unites us. And once we get to the facts, well, then we'll all know what actually happened in deep antiquity. But currently, what's being revealed is that the powers that be have been hiding this information for decades for their own purposes, for their own gain to control the story. Well, because of the internet and because of word of mouth, there is very little you can hide on this planet. And thankfully, science, well, is experiencing a rebirth of discovery and exploration into the true nature of humanity. And for that, I applaud all of that are involved, including the military industrial complex that is allowing this to occur and the scientists that are not covering this up. There's an immediate human connection to seeing human footprints. And when you find out that they're 12,000 or 23,000 years old, well, we have a lot of discovering to do, don't we? To see footprints from a distant past especially so much different than it looks today, can be impactful, especially what we know now. These prints are occurring right after the Younger Dryas catastrophe that many people was a plasma event in this region that burned everything, created the Grand Canyon, Bryce Canyon, Zion, in a geologic instant. And yet people survived and thrived. And we're all here today discovering the footprints that they left. And that is fantastic. All the links to everything we talked about will be below. Please leave a comment if you agree or disagree. But everything we presented is factual scientific evidence. And it's mind-blowing. And that's a boon to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. And be a hero. All you have to do is share the video. And that's a boom to knowledge. It's how we grow. And we love you. Be safe.